Hi, welcome to a new session of basic electrical and electronics engineering in which we are going to see uh, DC machines in class 1 where we are going to see the constructional details as well as the EMF induced or the current which is produced in a DC machine uh, which is quite uh, familiar with uh, electrical machines as well as uh, electrical technology for different streams of engineering. So we are going to see here only the basic concepts which are involved with constructional detail of DC machine. So this particular concept is common to all the sister branches of CSC that is IoT, AIML, Data Science, CSC and IT. So this comes uh, approximately in first year of your engineering. In some colleges you can see this kind of subject in the second year first semester. So anyhow, let us see what exactly this DC machine is all about and what are the constructional details which are involved with DC machine. So a DC machine converts electrical energy to mechanical energy which we generally term as motor and also Mechanical energy to electrical energy, which we term as generator. So this is a four pole machine where you have four poles which are placed perpendicular to each other in this fashion and such that the induced voltage is obtained between these poles and that is going to show the impact on the rotating part of the machine. So broadly, DC machine is divided into two halves that is the stationary part and the rotor part. The stationary part it is known as stator where it has the components like yoke, poles, pole shoe, field windings, which you can see on this particular figure. Whereas the rotor part, which is the rotating part of the machine, consists of broadly armature, commutator, brush contacts, and the shaft. So let us go into the detail. So this is the construction detail of a DC machine. So how to label all the parts of a DC machine? In this particular case, we are seeing a four pole DC machine. That DC machine can work as DC generator as well as DC motor. So the primary part of this DC machine, what we call as yoke. So this outer frame is known as yoke. And you can see a positive and negative sign of supply which is given to the poles of the machine. So that pole of the machine is consisting of windings which are surrounding this particular pole. So these are called as field windings and these four poles are nothing but the four pole machine. So generally we treat these, them, these particular architecture as poles and this particular parameter we treat as pole shoe. So these are exactly beneath of pole where they are going to support the windings that is the field windings on the poles of the DC machine. And you can see the direction of current. We are having a notation that the current flows from higher potential to the lower potential. So you need to check whether the flow of current that is the direction of the current it is starting from this corner and it is ending at this corner it is appropriately placed or not. So these kind of windings are field windings and the direction of the current which are flowing in the field windings are shown in this particular picture. The shaft, it is a center of the DC machine. The shaft, it can rotate in clockwise or in anti-clockwise. So pertaining to the direction of the shaft, the commutator as well as the armature will rotate. So you can see the armature, it is shown by these dotted lines. We are going to see in detail about the armature principle in our future classes. As of now, this armature, it is placed over the commutator, you can see in this particular picture. Then you have a commutator which is placed between shaft and the armature shown by this circuit which is in green color. So that is the commutator. What is the purpose of commutator? We are going to see now. 
then there you can see you have the two brush contacts which are assumed to be placed on the commutator what is the purpose of this brush contacts we'll discuss now so overall they are placed on particular stand so this particular construction reflects the four pole machine of a dc supply in fact dc machine okay so as we have seen different terms under this constructional details let us focus individually what they are all of means what is their purpose so the construction of dc machine involves with first yoke it is made up of rolled steel or cast steel and protects the machine from external disturbances also the yoke serves as a written path for the pole flux next poles the field coils are placed on the poles that allows the current flow through them so that an alternate north and south are created the windings so formed are known as field windings on the poles the pole cores are made up of thin laminations of sheet steel which are insulated from each other to reduce eddy current loss in our further classes we are going to see what is meant by eddy current loss so the main purpose of the poles are defined over here and pole shoe they are exactly placed in need of the poles field windings are supported by pole shoe so that they don't fall on the rotating part of the machine a pole shoe usually laminated distributes the pole flux over the rotor surface next we have the rotating part starting with the armature it is connected to rotating part of the machine the armature winding is composed of coils embedded in slots in the rotor the armature has a cylindrical steel core consisting of a stack of slotted laminations which we are going to see in our further figure then commutator its function is to faci facilitate the collection of current from the armature conductors and converts the ac induced in armature conductors into unidirectional current in the external load circuit then we have the brushes the function of the brushes is to collect current from commutator they are made up of graphite or carbon and are in the shape of a rectangular box so these are the important parts of dc machine whether they are going to act as generator or motor fine let us go with the construction so you please take a pencil take a compass take a scale and try to draw the construction of dc machine on a paper first you draw this kind of circle then you draw the outer core of this frame with a stand such that this acts like a yoke then you take two parallel lines like this and side lines like this again as short parallel lines like this and draw a curve path this forms one pole of the machine likewise you try to create four poles then take a shaft take a commutator and take the armature with the help of your compass you can draw these lines then talk about the winding which is starting from the higher potential the windings you can see it is going from the upper side and it is taking a curve like this then the curves are repeated like this and the wire it is stretched towards the next pole and the windings are coming from the bottom again the windings are coming from the top under bead of this pole and they are going towards this next pole and the windings are coming out like this in this fashion i hope you understood how the construction is framed it is the magic of compass scale pencil and with that you can draw this machine smoothly like this whether it is a four pole machine two pole machine or any type of machine you can draw like this now the direction of currents if at all you see the current is flowing from the top view or like this 
the same current is coming out like this and it is going in the bottom the winding is taken here in the bottom so the current is coming like this and the same current it is coming out from this bottom and it is going over the top of this windings and similarly the current it is which is coming out of from this they are coming out like this and this is how the output is coming so the brush contacts are assumed to be placed on the commutator so their purpose is to collect the current from the commutator so this is how the construction details of dc machines look alike the cross sectional view of armature shaft and commutator view when you see at the side angle this is how the commutator looks like so there is a armature which is connected to the commutator and the shaft as i told you the direction of the shaft will indicate the direction of the commutator as well as the armature and if at all you want to draw this on a side line you can draw like this with the help of a scale pencil and a small photo circle scale then you can have a commutator the lines which are indicating the different slots which are pertaining to the armature of the machine and then you have the armature then you can have the slots which are connected in between commutator and the armature and the original slots where the conductors are placed so the brown lines indicates the conductors they can be in one number or some multiples of n number so you can have 1 2 3 4 like this in individual slot so this is how you draw a side view of a dc machine especially the rotating part now principle of working of a dc machine and emf derivation involves with the basic concept of a dc generator which works on the principle of faraday's law of electromagnetic induction it states that the motion of a conductor through a magnetic field causes an emf to be induced in it whereas in case of dc motor when a current carrying conductor is brought in a magnetic field and the conductor cuts the flux lines a force acts on conductor and thus torque is developed and the electrical energy is converted into mechanical energy thus dc machine it can be act like generator as well it can like act like a motor the magnetic flux lines cut the conductors in the armature slots and hence when the armature is rotated with the help of a prime mover the flux lines cut the conductor and an emf is induced in the conductor which is given by e is equal to v l v where e is known as the voltage induced in one conductor l is known as the length of of the conductor in meters and is moving with velocity v in meters per second and the conductor is moving in a magnetic field of flux density b vapors per meter square so right now we are talking about the principle of generator and this is the induced voltage taking this as equation 1 if we treat z which is equal to total number of conductors and a which is equal to number of parallel paths then number of conductors in series is given by z by a therefore the emf generated in generator is given by e is equal to b l b z by a let us treat this equation as 2 let us suppose the flux per pole is 5 p num represents the number of poles we have here four poles and the total flux in the air gap is given by p phi then the normal cross sectional of the flux is the surface of the cylinder because it's a cylindrical in structure it will be 2 pi r l and the flux density of this machine will be given by b is equal to p phi by 2 pi r l that is a value of flux density also if n is the speed of the rotation of the armature in rpm the linear velocity v will be given by n times multiplied with 2 pi r by 60 so here we can see in equation 2 the b formula is given by p phi by 2 pi r l 
and velocity formulas given by n 2 pi r by 60. So we will make use of this equation 3 and equation 4 and we will try to substitute in equation 2 so that we are going to get E is equal to B value, B value, L as it is, Z by A as it is. So this will cancel out the like terms like this and we are left over with E is equal to that is the induced voltage in generator that is phi P and Z by 60 into A where phi represents the flux, P represents the poles, N represents the speed, Z represents the number of conductors, A represents the parallel path. So equation phi is known as the induced voltage in the case of generator. This voltage is also known as the back EMF in the case of motor. When we are going to deal with the motor, we will come to know what exactly the difference between induced voltage and back EMF. Okay, so when current is flowing out of the brushes, the torque opposes the rotation. The machine is acting as a generator and the voltage generated is given by equation 5. Also, when current is flowing into the brushes, the torque is in the direction of the rotation and the machine is acting as a motor. So, how to distinguish the DC machine, whether it is a motor or a generator? This clarification we can get with the help of Fleming's right hand rule. So, in the case of generator, when we stretch forefinger, thumb, and middle finger perpendicular to one another in our right hand, as shown below, like this, where the forefinger indicates the direction of magnetic field. The thumb indicates the direction of motion. Then the resultant middle finger indicates the direction of induced voltage. Thus, in case of generator, the direction of induced voltage is given by Fleming's right hand rule. What if the machine is working as motor? So you have to stretch your left hand by keeping forefinger, thumb, and middle finger perpendicular to each other so that your middle, sorry, your forefinger indicates the direction of the magnetic field. Middle finger indicates the direction of the current carrying conductor, and thumb indicates the direction of force, that is torque or motion. And hence, this is how the direction of motion is obtained in a motor with the help of Fleming's left hand rule. So I hope with this basic class, you must have understood what exactly the construction part of DC machine, working principle, as well as the directions of the resultant are obtained for a DC machine. I hope you like this class 1 under DC machine. Please subscribe to this channel, press the bell icon for the future notifications.